In this video, we're going to be showing you some tips on using the vector drawing tools here inside Photoshop, and more specifically, the custom shape tool and some of the neat things that we can do with it. And we partnered with Big Trigger to offer you a free set of custom shapes that you can download and experiment with. And of course, we have a great deal with Big Trigger right now on our Photo Perks Basics collection. So you definitely want to check that out as well. Now, this video is just kind of to give you an initial primer and get you excited about working with custom shapes here inside Photoshop, but there are so many things that we can do, so many different options with the various tools that Photoshop gives us, that one video can't teach you everything. So we definitely would encourage you to check out our YouTube channel, where you'll find a lot more tutorials on Photoshop, and more specifically, working with the vector drawing tools and the custom shape tools here inside Photoshop. And if you go to youtube.com forward slash Pixel Creator Pro, you'll find those additional video tutorials. So what we're going to do here is show you how you can be different. Anyone can go out and buy a set of wonderful looking shapes and use them as is and create great work. But then you're just like every other thousand photographers that purchase that same set of templates or that same set of custom shapes. Um, it's what you do with those custom shapes that's going to make you unique and that's what we're going to show you here inside Photoshop because it's super super easy to make yourself different. So let me show you. So what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and recreate this frame right here to show you some basic steps on recreating that frame and then we'll show you how we created this uh, little uh, image opening here on the right. And maybe what we'll do is we'll start there because that is very very simple and that will give you some ideas of where we're going to go with this. So first things first, just for the sake of it, let's set our foreground color to white. Now because anytime we add a new shape it's going to be whatever our foreground color is. So let's switch over to our custom shape tool. Now I already have the Big Trigger sampler set loaded. Now you're not going to have it loaded so let me show you how to load it. This is probably more like what your custom shapes is going to look like. In fact, you're probably going to see this. Very tiny thumbnails. So the first thing we want to do is make large thumbnails. And of course we can scale this box, this little preview box, as big as we want so we can see more shapes at one time. And then I'm going to choose the replace shapes option. Go to my big trigger set wherever I have it downloaded and that will load up the Big Trigger Sampler. Now, first things first, let's create that image opening on the right that I was talking about. So let's go to our Rectangle tool, draw out a rectangle. Notice we have a new shape layer. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Custom Shape tool, and I'm going to choose a different shape. I'm going to choose this one right here. If I hold down my Shift key, I can add to an existing shape layer, just that quick and easy. And notice when I drag this out, it kind of is stuck at the at the starting position of where I began to drag it out. But if I hold my space bar down, I can actually pick it up and move it. See, I can pick it up and move it wherever I want to. So just experiment with this because you'll see it's really easy. All right, so that's taken care of. And now you can see that kind of shape. And notice, because I held down my shift key, notice that that secondary piece is still on the original shape layer. And that's significant because, I'm going to cheat a little bit here, I'm actually going to come into Bridge, I have an image selected, so I'm going to use Pixel Creator to insert the image. But you don't have to use, obviously if you don't have Pixel Creator, uh, you'd have to insert it manually. But I'm going to use Pixel Creator to automatically insert the image for me, and then I'm going to right click and uh, flip this horizontal, and you could see that the image is actually flowing from our original rectangle also into the additional design element that we added to it. So it really makes for a, an interesting edge on that image, and that technique was so simple to do. So let's go ahead and turn that off and kind of move on a little bit. So next thing we're going to do is go to our custom shape tool and let's grab the edge of our frame. I'm just going to drag it out and because our foreground color is set to red, our shape is red. Doesn't matter what color our shape is, we can color that at the end. So the next thing I'm going to do is pull down a couple of guidelines and these will snap right to the edge of our shape. 
automatically. Now I need to trim away the, the right hand side of this shape because I'm not going to use it. So to do that, I would switch to my rectangle tool, hold down my Alt key or Option key for you Mac folks, and I can just trim away that part that I'm not using. Now I do have these pads that are still visible, and to get rid of those, we're going to use our Path Selection tool and choose the Combine option that gets rid of those extraneous paths that we don't need. Now for the rest of my frame. So back to my rectangle tool and I'm going to drag out my frame here and I have these guidelines that I can snap to which is kind of handy. Now I need to actually cut a hole and remember I'm actually going to demonstrate this if I hold down my alt key and start clicking from the middle as I drag out my next rectangle to cut a hole it's, it's starting right in that upper left hand corner is kind of a fixed position but I can actually hold my space bar and pick it up and move it remember just like I just showed you previously so I can position it exactly where I want it and let go now in a situation like we have here I actually want to modify that hole that I just cut because notice the margin at the top is quite significantly different than the margin at the bottom and I actually want that margin to be similar so what I'm going to do is switch over to yet another tool which is my direct selection tool I'm gonna to click on that path and notice these nodes that I get I can actually come in here and I can select just the bottom two nodes and with my arrow keys I can move that down now if I were to come in here and select all four of those nodes just make a big selection around those four nodes then I can move the whole box see that so you can really fine-tune exactly how you want it to appear now the next phase of course was our text right so we're gonna come in with our text tool and just type out our word and then of course we have to free transform and make our text a little bit bigger and I'm just going to squish it down here a little bit. Now, just to make it easier for us to see, I'm going to go ahead and uh, recolor this text. But first, I'm going to come over to my Layers palette and right-click and choose Convert to Shape. Then I can double-click on this little color square and change the color. Because I'm going to free transform this, and I'm going to actually lay it right on top of our frame here. So now we can kind of see what we have going here. Now what I actually want to do is I want to cut a hole where this word senior is. I want to cut a hole in my frame so I can see through to the texture below. And if you look over here in the layers palette, we have several different layers going. So what I want to do is I want to actually take all of these vector layer masks and combine them into one. So we're going to do this in steps. Let's click on shape two choose edit and copy then come down to shape one and choose edit and paste now with the paths from shape two added to shape one I'm gonna switch over to my direct selection tool and just make a big selection around all those paths switch over to my path selection tool and choose this option right here which is combine and I just combine those two paths now I just have one path then I can delete my shape 2 path because I don't need that no more and then up here where my text layer was again I'm going to choose edit and copy because remember I converted my text layer to a shape layer and got the vector paths of the letters and then I'm going to click on shape 1 the vector layer mask for it and choose edit and paste now I can delete the topmost layer now if we look at this it doesn't really look like our text is cut through so we can see to our background so what we need to do is we need to tell Photoshop that's what we want to do so again I'm gonna click on my shape one vector layer mask again I'm gonna switch over to my direct selection tool and click and drag and switch back to my path selection tool and choose this option right here which is exclude overlapping shape areas and as soon as I do that we get the result we were looking to get all along and that is now we can see through where those letters were we actually see through to our background texture now what I'm gonna do here of course is change the color of my frame to be whatever we want just select that and then I'm gonna come in here and make a selection like so 
And again, I'll cheat a little bit here and use Pixel Creator to insert our image, but you get the idea. It's really, really easy uh, to work with these custom shapes and be able to create something uh, really interesting and something that no one else has this exact same shape unless they thought of the exact same idea as you did. Now, you ready for the punchline in all this? Because here's where this super exciting part comes in, is that now that we've taken the time to create this masterpiece of a shape, this little frame, we can actually save this as a new custom frame. So we could use this again and again and again. Or we can share with our photography buddies. So we just click on that vector layer mask and choose edit, define custom shape. We could give it a fancy name if we wanted to. And usually what I do, when I, especially when I'm creating frames like this, usually what I'll do is I'll come in here and grab my direct selection tool and just click on these nodes over here to the right and then again, using my arrow keys, what, what we have basically is we have a frame that is of a landscape in nature. And then I'll make a square version of that frame. So again, I can click on my vector layer mask and choose Edit Define Custom Shape. And then, of course, uh, the portrait one we could just rotate. Um, but if we go back in, delete all of these extra layers, like so. And then if I ever wanted to recreate that frame again, go to my custom shape tool. And there you'll see those two frames that we just created. And I just click and drag. And there is that frame again. It's really that easy. Now, in just like I was explaining before, what if I wanted to add a little something to the frame? No problem. All you have to do is go to our custom shape tool. Let's add a little something. So maybe I want to add some little flower effect to the frame. So I just hold down my shift key and click and drag and space bar over, something like so. And now that can add to the frame, but these paths are kind of extending over uh, what I really what I really wanted. So what might be better to do is to go ahead and add that next element on its own separate layer. We'll go ahead and position it here. So we'll add that next element on its own separate layer. Then we'll trim away the part that we don't want. Remember we hold down the Alt key and trim away the part we don't want at the top and at the bottom. We have all this extra path information that we don't need. So we switch over to our path selection tool and hit combine. That combines those paths and now I can go ahead and copy this path, edit copy and paste it down to shape one. Remember, edit and paste. I can get rid of this and I'll combine those paths. And voila, we have yet a new shape. So now, if I choose edit, define custom shape, we now have this great looking frame with a little flowered edge. So I, again, if I go back up here, there is that frame plane and a frame with a flowered edge. And I drag it out and there we have it. Of course we could give it whatever color we wanted to. Just that quick and easy. So you can see you can really have a lot of fun creating these types of frames and there's so many things that you could do. I could go on and on and on. But if you have a great collection of vector design elements like our Photo Perks Basics Bundle will give you, you can really have fun creating all kinds of great configurations and really spice up your layouts. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little something. Sometimes I can be a little bit long-winded. Sometimes I move a little bit fast, but watch the video a couple times over. I think you'll pick up all the important bits and you'll be creating some great uh, shape configurations of your own. Thanks for watching.